Hello, everyone. Welcome to your weekend edition of Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for our weekend. Yes, so this is for Friday the 13th. Yes, I said that correctly. Friday the 13th through Sunday the 15th of September 2019. Please keep in mind that this is general, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also keep in mind that these readings, all of the readings that you see on my channel, whether it's morning coffee or not, all readings on my channel are meant to be timeless, yes? So in terms of morning coffee, just because it is dated for this specific weekend, it does not mean it has to only resonate for this weekend. Now. Keep, also keep in mind that um, what we're doing today is a specific uh, full moon in Pisces Friday the 13th reading, yeah? So this is going to be a little more specific to a certain time period. However, this still can resonate with you at any moment. And the thing that, actually, that Spirit actually really wanted me to make sure I mentioned to you guys um, for this reading is really allow this reading to resonate throughout the, the weekend. I've been, because I, I uh, yesterday I came to the conclusion, I was guided to not do a reading yesterday for, for the dailies, um, but to instead focus my intention and energies on a reading for the full moon. Um, and they were saying specifically that the energy or the, the, the messages that are coming through are for not just Friday the 13th, they really are for the weekend. Like they really want us to take some time to reflect on what is being said, the messages that are coming through for this reading throughout the weekend, okay? So this one is gonna be a little more specific, obviously because of the full moon, but it can really resonate at any time. Um, and I'm actually getting specifically that for some of you, um, this might actually be something that can resonate throughout uh, the week of the 16th, which is Monday through what would, uh, the 21st, I believe it would be Friday. Um, that was something that specific that just came through. We're still going to be doing daily readings for that week, but you get it. Okay. So you don't really have a pre-shuffle here. Um, I was just, I was shuffling for a while and, um, I actually didn't get any sort of inclination to do a pre-shuffle. I kind of just wanted to start the reading and we're going to do it. So this is going to be fairly freestyle, obviously, um, but I don't really have a structure here. I'm just going to be starting with, you know, the, the initial general messages that they have for us for this full moon in Pisces, Friday the 13th, yes, which I think is so cool. Um, Friday the 13th, and we're having a full moon. I love it. Uh, but, um, and then we're gonna, and then depending on what comes out, I'm just gonna go from there. Yeah? Okay. Um, I do wanna say, though, that the pre, the, the, my shuffling session landed on the Queen of Swords with her back turned, um, and then on the other side is death. And as I was channeling, as I was looking into this card, I heard that song that we, that was, I don't, uh, I don't really don't know the name of the song, but um, I just heard it. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Yes, because this is the side of death where um, you, this is basically the rebirth side. Yeah. And it's funny because this week has been really rough. Last week was really rough. And I never put two and two together that the energies have been so rough because we were coming up on a full moon and it's a full moon in Pisces, no less. Like Pisces is one of the most emotionally um, in tuned or inclined signs in the Zodiac. So it makes so much sense, so much sense that things have been so emotionally heavy lately. Lots of purging, lots of healing. Okay, this is really good. This is a really, really good thing. All right, guys. Let's just get started. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our weekend of Friday the 13th through Sunday the 15th. Please guide us specifically through the energies of this full moon in Pisces 
what is it that you would like to discuss with us about this full moon? Past, present, and future. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, so um, I'm getting a channeled message here. I, I heard August. And I heard, and I asked, I was like, August, what about August? And they said, August was a very intense time period for a lot of us. Uh, I'm getting the sense that this is when a lot of strong and deep purging really kicked off. And we didn't really recognize it. We didn't really realize it at first. <laughs> Mainly, they're, they're saying this. Mainly because we were all so, um, we were all having such a good time in the, in the middle of summer and we were just enjoying summer and blah, blah, blah. Which was excellent, which was great, which was exactly what we needed to do because it was kind of distracting us from, from what was starting. Um, and that allowed the momentum to get rolling without too much resistance or interference from us. And so now we're kind of catching up to <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, I'm going to give this three shuffles. And then we're going to see what we've got for... today. All right. Full moon in Pisces on Friday the 13th. I want to watch Hocus Pocus right now. I totally, I totally, I'm totally in a Hocus Pocus vibe. Um, I just watched a little thing on, uh, on YouTube about Hocus Pocus and like the whole filming of it and everything. It's, I love that movie. Oh my God, I love that movie. I totally want to watch that this weekend. Okay, here we go, guys. Full moon in Pisces. Spirit, what do we need? To, ooh, chow. Oh, Lord in heaven. Okay. Just this one pull. You got it, spirit. You got it. Okay. Yes. Overall energy. Wow. Okay, this is powerful. We have the Wheel of Fortune. And it's the side of the Wheel of Fortune in which we have the Magician, okay? Um, all right. And then we have, on this side, we have the Three of Cups. Joyous celebration. And this is definitely, what I'm feeling from the Three of Cups is definitely a universal energy. Um, strong message here. No matter what it is you're going through over this weekend, or throughout this time period, or for whenever this is resonating with you. Um, no matter how down in the dumps you may feel, no matter how high up in the sky you may feel, make sure to practice a healthy dose of gratitude here, okay? That's one of the main messages of this card specifically in this deck, or at least this side of the card. Gratitude is supreme. Gratitude is key, okay? What do we have here? We have the Ten of Swords, the Knight of Cups, the Six of Swords, the Seven of Wands, the Five of Cups, the Page of Pentacles, <laughs> and the Tower. Woo! Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Um, so I want to start, I want to talk about this first. This Ten of Swords. Uh, so... Uh, I love that it's this side of the card that's come through here because this is this is giving me a very similar vibe to the Three of Swords in which on one side of the Three of Swords we have a shield with a heart on it that's pierced with three knives in this deck. On the other side we have that same shield, right? But we're looking at it from the back. We see a flower growing from behind the shield and we see an individual in a suit of armor that looks to be the owner of that shield kind of reflecting back on the damage done we'll say here we have a very similar setting we have 
an in uh, what looks like it could be an individual um, in a suit of armor. And we have someone else. Well, okay, I can't really tell because I don't know how this person would get out of this suit of armor with all <laughs> with all of those ten swords in it. And yet I'm still feeling like, especially since this person that's sitting there on the side, like observing, looking at this suit of armor pierced with all these swords, he's not wearing much. He's just wearing a pair of trousers. Um, so to me, that gives me an, the, the impression that this is like you looking back on the pain that you've been through, looking back on the situations that you've experienced, okay? The worst is over. The worst is behind you. And it could be, if you're still hurting from this, it could be that, you know, it's literally just in your mind, all right? We also have the sun eclipsed by something. There is an eclipse on the sun here. Could be, well, it would be, I guess it would be by the moon. Um, yeah, it would be by the moon, Eric, duh. But that's actually kind of perfect. The moon might be eclipsing the sun right now. I mean, obviously, we don't have an eclipse going on, but we do have a full moon. And yes, okay, that's where I was getting that from. I was like, where am I getting that whole, if you're still hurting by this, it's your mind. That's, that's, it's all in your mind. Well, the worst is behind you, all right? Things are changing, but your mind, which is ruled by the moon, is kind of eclipsing the sunlight, is eclipsing the bright dawn, the new day that you are feeling or experiencing, all right? You have the Knight of Cups here with the Six of Swords, definitely moving on. This really, this does feel, this feels very emotional. This feels very emotional. I'm not gonna lie, you guys, this feels very emotional. I mean, other than the fact that, you know, we've all been kind of riding this crazy wave, you know, for the last, yeah, we'll say two weeks, um, just what I'm getting from, and yeah, okay, it is reflected in the rest of the cards here, but what I'm feeling specifically, when I look at the Knight of Cups and the Six of Swords, this is just a very somber movement forward. Very somber. Um, there's still probably, there's still a good amount of heartbreak here. I'm not going to lie. Even though, yeah, it may still be in your mind. Yes, it really is in your mind because it's not like, it's not like you're physically dealing I don't know. You might, I, I, you might be physically dealing with some stuff, but I don't. I, I feel like for the most part, whatever it is that you are moving on from, absolutely, definitely is in the past. It's not like you have any sort of recurrence of it in your physical life right now. For again, this is a general reading. For so, for some of you, there still may be some remnants. Okay. But even still, if there are some physical remnants of whatever it is you're leaving behind or whatever it is you're moving forward from. It's minuscule, okay? It really doesn't have much of an effect on your life. It's mainly your mind and your heart that are grieving from this. It's in your mind and you're still feeling some sort of emotion as you're moving forward, especially with this Knight of Cups energy. It's as if you're moving forward almost reluctantly, And what I'm getting, I'm feeling an energy of just praying and hoping that there are better feeling times on the horizon or ahead of you. I totally understand. I totally get that. Ooh. It's, and also with this Six of Swords energy, it's like you're, you're, you're emerging from a cave or a, a sort of cocoon, you're emerging from the darkness. This is definitely an energy of awakening. Definitely an energy of an awakening here with the symbology of moving, of, uh, of, uh, moving forward, emerging from a cave. You see, it looks like they're coming out of a cave here. You're coming out of some sort of darkness, but it's the memories of that darkness that are still affecting you. And yet there is a sense, even though there's, there's, there's sorrow here, there is a sense of optimism. And that really could just be 
you just wanting to feel better, hey, I will drink to that. <laughs> mm. Mm, mm, mm. So then we also have the Seven of Wands, the Five of Cups, there's that sorrow, somberness, the Page of Pentacles, and the Tower. And I keep hearing this song in my head. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. It doesn't really feel like the rain is gone quite yet. And yet there is a deeper sense of clarity. Okay. Um, but there's still a sense of guardedness. And I still, and I really feel like some of us are still dealing with some sort of upheaval. We're still dealing with some, with like dust settling from the tower. Um, and it's absolutely this tower energy that is bringing forward some sort of somberness, five of cups. Even though we're moving forward, we're moving on towards something new, we have a new start here with the page of pentacles, okay? We are starting, we're, I want to say we're starting over, we're starting fresh, we're starting anew. There is definitely a sense of guardedness here. Five of cups, seven of wands. And what I'm getting with the Seven of Wands is a very strong, stern energy of do not fuck with me. Do not approach me. Don't text me. Don't email me. I don't want to hang out. I don't want to be your friend. Blah, blah, whatnot, whatever. Just leave me alone. Oof. I know exactly. I mean, I yeah. That is definitely part of these energies right now not really wanting to hang out, not really wanting to, to associate, even in times where you're feeling a little bit more jovial, yes, and you're like, you know what, I've been hibernating, I've been, I've, got, I've had my head in the sand, I've been reclusive, let me, let me go out, let me have a good time. And even when you do that, it's like five minutes in, you're like, good God, get me out of here. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. There's definitely a sense of much rather connecting with people energetically and remotely. And by energetically, I mean connecting to the universe, connecting to your soul family via energetic connection, but not really associating in the physical. I'm hearing, I just, I just need time alone. I just want time alone. There also is a sense of feeling dissatisfaction and disappointment when it comes to associating with individuals in the physical world. Okay. And what I'm hearing is you're releasing a lot of aspects of your life that no longer serve you. And until you can really get your footing, your foundation there in this new sense of energetic space, in this, I just heard, in this new time-space continuum. And to me, that means that we're really shifting our timelines right now. So you need to get into your new timeline in which you are better placed, for lack of a better term. I'm, I'm translating. I'm, I'm literally getting this download as it's coming through. So, um, or I'm, I'm speaking this download as it's coming through. So I'm just kind of like translating here. But a new time-space continuum in which you are much more accurately placed. And I guess that means... Yes, that means that you are in a more authentic energetic space, time-space continuum type situation. You, have, you are shifting timelines. I'm literally, like, I'm, they're showing, I'm seeing this. So you have, we'll look at it as you have two lanes of traffic. Obviously, there are way more than two lanes of traffic, but so let's just focus on these two lanes right now. The lane on the left, okay, it's, it, it looks like it's red. So the lane on the, ref, on the left, which is red, is the, the, the lane of traffic that you've been flowing through since 
since you were born, since your day, the day of your birth. Okay, since you phys physically incarnated into this lifetime. Okay, the lane on the right, which is blue, is the lane that you are literally shifting into. So you have these two lanes here. They're running, for the moment, they're running parallel to each other. And there's like a little white offshoot coming from this red lane into this blue lane in which you are now crossing through that little white pathway into this next, into this other lane. And once you get into that other lane, the lanes split off. Yes? This is a temporary period where these lanes are aligned so that you can shift into your new timeline. As you're shifting into this new timeline, you're releasing all of this shit. Ten of Swords. So this is why you feel like this. Five of Cups, Seven of Wands. Because you are in fact waking up the tower. Whoops. Okay. So drop the defenses then. <laughs> <coughs> you saw that? Seven of Swords, the Seven of Wands just, ooh, Seven of Swords. Oh boy, okay. Yeah, Spirit just said, this defensiveness is a little bit of a problem. <laughs> uh, you're being overly defensive. Like, take your time. Allow yourself to, allow yourself, if you need time and space to just not be around people, that is absolutely okay. But vindictiveness, spite, anger, rage, even though these are things you may be feeling, emotions that you may be moving through as you make this shift, harboring them, holding on to them, which would be harboring them, um, expressing them, but 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 expressing them with intent to to with malicious intent, expressing them intentionally to get back at people again, spitefulness. That is not beneficial. That is not helpful. That's not going to help anybody. Expressing them in terms of like writing about it, uh, 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 dancing through it, singing through it, um, some sort of cathartic pra practice to release the energy, the emotions, beautiful. We highly recommend that. But we do not recommend that you um, direct that at anybody with intent to do harm because that's going to come back and bite you in the ass, okay? Okay. So let's get clarifying here. Okay, I'm going to start with this one. Ten of Swords, Knight of Cups, Six of Swords here. And you know what? It's so crazy. This is the this is a, a, a full moon in Pisces. Pisces being the last sign of the zodiac. For a lot of us, this is kind of like the last bit of purging that we need to experience, that we need to go through in order to really get to this new expression, this new phase in our lives. And of course, of course, it would have everything to do with emotion. First of all, it's Pisces. But second of all, it is the fact that our emotions need to be healed, need to be cleansed, need to be cleared. We need to be aware of the emotions that we've been harboring, um, that we may have not necessarily been aware of, but that had just been like festering in the background subconsciously. We're also in a period, I mean, me personally, I'm in a period where I am um, focusing on, you know, feeling the past emotions, but now changing the story. Instead of sitting in or wallowing in the emotions, feeling through them, working on purging them, working on cleansing and releasing them, and then changing my, 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 my vibration changing my emotional state from that of, res uh, of, of resistance and sorrow and sadness into in what I've been describing as getting back into the vortex. 
right? Using the 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 um, periods of contrast to see where I was, and then consciously change my focus to where I want to be, to where I know I deserve to be, to know where I know I should be. And it's only should because that's what your natural state is. Happiness, oh, Ace of Cups, happiness, bliss, all that good stuff, okay? So let's get some clarity. Ten of Swords, Knight of Cups, Six of Swords, please, Spirit. Just a deeper understanding of this, please. Just a deeper understanding here. Okay, cool. Overall energy underneath. Yep. There it is. Death. All right, so this really is the transformation. Ten of Swords, Knight of Cups, Six of Swords. This literally is the transformation. Death. We have the King of Swords, the Ace of Wands, the Three of Swords, the Ten of Swords again, the Five of Pentacles, the Three of Wands, and the Nine of Pentacles. Okay, so there is a passionate yet a stern energy here with the Ace of Wands and the King of Swords. And this feels like you have an opportunity, if you're not already embodying this, you have an opportunity to recognize consciously what it is you truly desire. Um, specifically, what I'm getting here is how you want to change your mind space, your mental scape, your thought process, your thought patterns. This is inspiring. This feels like inspiration towards changing the way you think about yourself, and about life, about your reality, about what it is you want, about what it is you, who you desire to be, about what it is you de desire to experience. There is also a strong um, guardian energy here. I, I kind of want to say a strong defensiveness, but I don't want you to confuse that with the defensiveness we were talking about here. This is about being very clear about what it is you want and not allowing anyone to sway you from it. Now, you don't necessarily have to be completely 100% clear about what it is you want right now, but there is at least still an energy of deciding, no, you or anyone else are not going to sway me from my stability, from my inspiration. This is who I am. This is what I want to be. This is how I want to live my life. This is my authenticity. If you don't like it, you can fuck off. That's just, that's how stern and strong this energy is. And, it, and, and this is where spirit is cautioning us to not allow this to move into a, some sort of vindictiveness or spitefulness or I just heard rage or trying to hurt somebody. This is not the queen of swords energy. This is the king of swords energy. This is diplomacy. This is authenticity this is truth this is maturity but this is also not allowing someone to sway you from your path period end of story okay what's coming to an end here heartbreak disappointment yes but also feelings of inadequacy five of pentacles three of swords ten of swords okay there is also so that's what you that's literally what you're moving away from Beautiful. There's also a sense of independence for sure. Three of Wands, nine, nine of Pentacles. Okay. Three of Wands is saying to me that you are absolutely on your path. Anything and everything that has happened to you up until this period has absolutely been exactly what was necessary. Regardless of what it is. And I know some of you, and maybe I'm just picking up on my own energy, but I'm going to say this. Uh, <laughs> my life, personally speaking, has not been 
easy. I'm dealing with a lot of elements, personally, that I wouldn't wish on anybody. So, some of you may be saying, oh, well, it's easy for you to say that, Eric. You're not going what I'm going. You're not going through what I'm going through. Well, trust and believe that I'm going through some, some pretty heavy bullshit myself. And yet the message still stands. Everything that you have experienced in this lifetime, on this journey, was absolutely what you came here for. And it's serving a purpose. And right now what I can tell you is that purpose is that it is. It really has forced you into a sense of independence. Nine of Pentacles. But think about it. I mean, okay, maybe you've gone through, maybe you've been dealing with some really shitty stuff. But think about the person that you are right now. Sitting here, listening to this reading, probably nodding your head, saying, yup, yup, yup. Well, think about how much autonomy you have cultivated, how much sovereignty you have established, how, how, how much abundance you have tuned into, tapped into. I mean, this literally feels like you are absolutely your own person, a free thinker even. That was a, that was a really strong message, a free thinker. That's priceless, isn't it? So it kind of trumps anything. Ooh. Well. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It negates. <laughs> it negates any of the negativity you have experienced in the past. Because, hello, last time I checked, you're not dead yet. <laughs> yeah, I heard that groan. I heard it. Ugh, don't remind me. Yeah, yeah, well. I get it too. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that you're still here, guys. You're still thriving. You're still shining. So, good on ya. <laughs> yes? <laughs> okay. Let's talk about this then. Seven of Wands, Page of Pentacles, Five of Cups, and the Tower. Yeah, bitches underneath <laughs> all right nine of swords yeah all right cool saw that coming i guess we have the page of wands no i'm sorry the knight of wands interesting oh i'm getting the gaslighting energy from this knight of wands eight of cups the emperor the six of wands okay Uh, independence, strong, strong, whew, strong independence. Knight of Wands energy. Interestingly enough, the Knight of Wands feels to, in this deck uh, right now. This is uh, in this deck. I'm sorry. This is the 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 Son of Wands, which is the Knight of Wands. But what I'm getting from the Knight of Wands in this case is some sort of gaslighting energy. And with the emperor here, it's like you're taking your power back, you're asserting yourself, and not letting anybody gaslight you any longer. I mean, for lack of a better term, I guess? I don't know. Take that as it resonates for you. I feel like there's more behind this. Knight of Wands, this, this, there's, there's more behind the, the phrase that's being used, which is gaslighting. There's more behind it for that. So, like... I guess, okay, another word for it, Spirit is saying would be manipulation. That's very interesting. Okay, people coming in, kind of preaching to you, trying to 
make you feel like, or with this impre- this understanding or this this belief that they have, they know the right way and they have something to offer you in terms of bettering your life, but it's really just imposing on your life in a way. It, it, they don't really, it, a sense of self-importance maybe even. Um, I'm, uh, those are some of the things that are coming through there. And you could say that for that, like you know, for some of us that are on, for those of us that are are on this awakening journey, we go through these periods where we want to just tell everybody everything that we're experiencing and try and get people to change. But then you quickly learn that you can't force change on anyone; they have to be willing to change themselves. So like any sort of unsolicited advice is really not advisable, right? But then also what I'm feeling with this Knight of Wands energy is that these are people, there are, there are some people out there that are kind of just like not even really on any sort of like awakening journey or anything. They just have this sense of authority to them that's really, that really has no like basis almost like self-appointed authority is a kind of also what I'm getting here. Again, that's a very broad message, so take it as it resonates. But then we also have the Eight of Cups with the Six of Wands. Walking away from that. Walking away from all of that. And with the Eight of Cups here, um, the Eight of Cups came out Wednesday, I believe it was. It came out this past week. Um, and we were talking about how someone was, or a group of us, many of us, are walking away from some sort of pipe dream that was sold to us that turned out that we were sold, we were, we were, in essence, we were kind of promised a 10, but it only turned out to be an 8, right? And that's kind of the energy that I'm getting here. That also could be, hey, that salesman with the Knight of Wands energy. The, the door-to-door salesman, the, the gaslighter, the bait-and-switcher. There's that Knight of Wands energy right there. Walking away from that, taking your power back. Oh, oh, okay. This is actually the Six of Swords here, not the Six of Wands, but it feels it could be a Six of Swords energy. I'm sorry, a Six of Wands energy. Because it does, it does feel like victory is here with this rainbow. It does feel victorious. Because you're leaving the past behind you. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Now, you still have some anxiety here. Nine of swords. And I almost... Uh, I want to I get a little bit more here but specifically on the Nine of Swords energy. Why are we, what are we Nine of Swordsing? Why are we Nine of, nine of Swordsing situations here? Knight of Pentacles just wanted to pop out. Um, okay, yeah, this is a slow and arduous process. All right, no, I get it. Maybe, maybe that was our answer. <laughs> it wasn't. I'm gonna pull a little bit more. Just on the Nine of Swords specifically, how, just some advice on how to deal with this, this anxiety that we're feeling as we're moving forward. I mean, we're ob we are absolutely manifesting a brand new change in our lives, you know, with this Wheel of Fortune and the Magician. We are absolutely manifesting this. Six of Cups, um, Justice, yeah. We're manifesting this ourselves as much as we can. You know, we're, we're, we're in, in control as much as we can. And that is in control or working on being in control of our thoughts and our actions and our emotions. As this wheel turns, this is like definitely keeping ourselves in check as the wheel turns. But in terms of this anxiety, Ooh. Justice with the Six of Cups. Yes. And the Eight of Cups. All right. So, yeah. 
Eight of Cups again, we're absolutely moving on from the past. And any sort of injustice that we have dealt with, that we have felt both in this lifetime as children specifically or earlier in life, but also in past lives, all of that is being cleared away. And the Nine of Swords or the anxiety is that upheaval, is that purging energy. Okay. Um, give me a second. I'm moving on to the Oracle section now, but I heard Lenormand. Okay, so uh, there's more that wants to come through on this Six of Cups, Justice, Eight of Cups from the Lenormand deck. And then we're going to get into the Oracle Guidance from the, from, we're going to go with the Dragons this weekend. For sure. All right. So, Guidance here. Six of Cups, Justice. Justice has been coming out a lot all across the board lately. Ba scales are being balanced. Wrongs are being right. Energies are being balanced out. Karma is being balanced. You may be taking steps to balance your own karma. Like you're, I, I feel like in some cases you may be doing things to help alleviate some karma. Um, taking an active role in balancing your karma instead of allow, just allowing or... Yeah, instead of just letting the universe do it on your behalf, it's like you, you, you may be taking steps that can be seen as working hand in hand in tandem with the universe in balancing your karma. We have the writer here, which is about a message. But also I'm seeing the writer as, you know, because it is um, a, car a woman riding a carousel horse, right? And so you... you that is indicative of the ups and downs of life. Um, but it also speaks to a message coming forward. What is this? I hear, I heard clear and concise communication, okay? Uh, being honest, being authentic. Um, I'm getting a sense of leaving behind any sort of false realities, especially with this tower energy that came out in the beginning. Um, this actually feels like moving into an energetic space of regardless of where you are, you know, on the ups and downs of life as you're riding through, there is always a need or a sense of authenticity, period. So like not only being authentic when you're up, when you're like up, also being authentic when you're down. Ooh. Which brings love. Good golly. There's more they're saying. The swans. Oof. A counterpart, someone that aligns with you, your authenticity, your authenticity is really, is really important, you guys. And what I'm getting with this is, oh, well, also, okay. Oh, shit. Holy shit. Oh, shit. Um, this is a union. The ring. Oh my God, with the clover at the bottom. Oh my God, you guys. Luck. Commitment. Reciprocity, I'm hearing. So you can see the swans here as external relationship yes but obviously it starts on the internal first this is literally you fusing yourself together 
coming into a commitment with yourself, coming into an, a sense of inner, inner marriage, internal union. There's also wow. So this just took a, a turn towards relationships because um, we started with this nine of swords. We were this, the justice and the six of cups were meant to. Clarify the Nine of Swords. So now the Six of Cups also talks about soulmates. So there could be some sort of justice coming forward. I'm hearing alignment. Maybe in terms of twin flames, the swans are have been uh, a symbol of the twin flame journey, um, divine partnership, soulmate, whatnot, whatever. So the anxiety could be around our relationship, a divine partnership. And we're afraid This could be the masculine counterpart is afraid. The masculine here could be leaving behind. Wow. The fuck boy energy, the knight of wands. Justice is going to be served here. There, uh, Alignment is happening is what I'm hearing. Alignment is happening. You have a message of commitment. The rider, the ring, the swans, the clover, good luck, fortune. I want to read the swans here. Well, it's heart. The form of happiness and love is simply drawn in my shape. I am your feelings and emotions. I am your passions and devotions. Just make sure no bad cards are around to, to spoil this fondness and affection. The, the heart is, of course, a symbol, is symbolic of love and relationship. Here we see the heart formed by two swans, a bird itself symbolic with courtly relationship, monogamy, and enduring love. The heart is always a card signifying beneficial emotions to, in the Lenormand. To receive the combination of the heart with clover and ring... Let me say that again. To receive the com combination of the heart with clover and ring promises love, luck, commitment, and marriage. And looky here, underneath ring you have the time. And I'm hearing it's only a matter of time. 37, boiling down to a 10. Now, I, what I want to say here with this Wheel of Fortune energy, with the magician coming forward in that, um, you're literally manifesting this yourself by keeping yourself in alignment with you, with who you are, with your authenticity, not trying to stay in alignment with anyone in external just to make something happen. No, staying here in your alignment. You can, I'm seeing this as the internal marriage, the internal union that is leading to an external situation. Okay, I'm going to leave that there. But in terms of this full moon, absolutely, I'm getting an energy of the purging that you're going through right now is leading you to this relationship because it's leading you, it's, it's strengthening your bond within, which then creates the external reflection. Wow. Okay. This is justice for soulmates all around. And this, before I go any further, this, 
autonomy is key here, okay? Because what I'm getting is three of wands, nine of pentacles, all right? What I'm getting here is these soulmates are going to come together, are going to find this bond because they have stepped out of the matrix. They have gone through whatever it is they needed to go through, learned some sort of lessons to adequately step out of the, out of the matrix and be more of their authentic selves, be more autonomous, right? Reclaim their power, the emperor, and choose to walk away from gaslighting type situations. Energetic vampires also is something that I just heard. Eight of Cups, Six of Swords, Knight of Wands. Take your power back. Come into alignment with the self, which is exactly what we were talking about with the last reading for Wednesday, where the Two of Cups was coming out left and right, and all three of the of the, the tarot decks that I used, the Two of Cups came out, and it was talking about that inner alignment, that inner union. Here it is, the external re representation of that internal work you're doing. These soulmates, these partners, Regardless of who they are, maybe it's the same person that you wanted in the past or you that was catalytic in the past or maybe it's someone brand new. Who knows? It really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because the focus is on the internal. And so these counterparts are going to come together from this place of autonomy. Nine of Pentacles. That's what I'm seeing here. That is the justice that is being served in terms of soulmates. Also, it is the justice that's being served in terms of past life karma or this life karma. Literally releasing yourselves from that karma. Actively releasing yourselves from that karma. The Wheel of Fortune with the Magician on the card, right? Oh no, I'm almost out of coffee. <laughs> okay, so now let's get your oracle guidance from the dragons. There it is right there. Black dragon from Saturn. Is that it? sufficient? Okay. Black dragon from Saturn brings you wisdom through spiritual discipline. Concentrate. Focus on your ultimate vision. Congratulate yourself. You have passed a test. And it's so crazy because there has been a theme that I was feeling over the like over this week a little bit. I want to say maybe starting Wednesday or something of discipline. Needing to be disciplined. Disciplined about your habits, disciplined about your thoughts, disciplined about your actions. Deliberate thoughts specifically. Let's see. Black Dragon from Saturn. And this is not an energy that I'm feeling where it's like, you know, you're you're cracking the whip on yourself and like saying you are going to be disciplined now, you lazy piece of shit. No, it's not like that. It's about a conscious energy of saying Okay, I know that I need, to, I need to be disciplined in this way. I know the value of this, and so I'm going to do this for myself. I'm going to lovingly bring myself into alignment and maintain the discipline so that I can main, make sure that I achieve that which I know I am capable of and that which I know I am worthy of. Oh, okay. Give me a second, guys. I'm having trouble locating. Oh, there it is. Black dragon from Saturn. Fifth dimensional dragon. Well, hold on, Eric. What page is it on? <laughs> okay. Black dragon from Saturn. Fifth dimensional black dragons work directly with the masters, with the masters of Kishi. I've never heard of that. The ascended, the ascended aspect of Saturn. Kishi is spelled Q-U-I-S-H-Y. So is it, is it Kishi? No, it's Kishi. Anyway. <laughs> they help us to organize and apply ourselves to tasks, however small or large they may be. Black indicates a feminine energy of rest, 
peace and calm, which enables the wisdom to come forward. It could not do so if there was too much masculine thrust. These dragons work with Archangel Gabriel, who radiates pure white light. He is in overall charge of the base center, where we hold fifth dimensional spiritual discipline. This is what enables all the fifth dimensional chakras to anchor. Archangel Gabriel's energy balances that of black dragons of the, I'm sorry, Archangel Gabriel's energy balances that of the drac dragons of Saturn. These dragons also carry the pure violet flame of transmutation, which is held in Saturn and used uh, and use it to dissolve thoughts that are not focused on the ultimate vision. That's literally what I was just saying. The discipline is mostly in the form of your thoughts. Okay, but then also it, it leads also into the follow through, right? The action you take subsequently, the direction you move in, the choices you make. It all comes from maintaining your alignment within your thoughts. The guidance here is, a black dragon from Saturn has appeared to you now as it is time for you to address tasks with discipline and focus. Spiritual discipline is vital to ground the higher energies on, on your pathway. The black dragon will give you focus, concentration, determination, awareness, and the ability to plan and stick to a routine where necessary. Receiving this card is a true blessing as it indicates that your feet are firmly planted on your ascension path and you do everything for the highest good of all. This dragon also brings you congratulations from the angelic world as you have passed a test you have been undergoing. It is time to celebrate your success and step forward with discipline as well as with joy and bliss. So there you have it guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. It sure was a long reading. I mean, damn, damn near an hour, but hey, it was necessary, right? I love you guys so much. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I will see you over the weekend for the Connecting with Your Inner Masculine, Connecting with Your Inner Feminine readings for the week. Um, but with that said, I hope you have a fantastic Friday the 13th and a fantastic weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee Monday morning. Y'all, take care. Bye.